Yes, uh, within this lecture I would like to explain you the universal soil loss equation which is for us very important as river engineers because it determines how much sediment is flowing within the river. So the sediment flowing within the river is coming from upstream on the one hand but also it's coming as an intake from the land because of soil loss which is going finally into the rivers and is transported with the rivers to the sea. But the universal soil loss equation is not only important for us as river engineers, <coughs> it's also important for agricultural engineering because when we have something like soil loss, for example here, we have um, a degradation of the soil and finally they are not any more uh, available for agricultural engineering or something like this. So we have poverty in such regions where we don't uh, where we are not any more able to grow something like f f uh, crops or whatever. So soil loss is a very important subject for the whole world and therefore we have to explain it by using some kind of mathematics which shows us the causes of soil loss. So, and the first and most important equation to describe soil loss is the so-called universal soil loss equation, USLE, uh, universal soil loss equation <coughs> and the first thing I would like to have a look on that equation. So this equation is describing the uh, the soil loss in tons per year per hectare which means 100 times 100 meter. Um, and the universal soil loss equation is just a factorization of all the factors which are deep, uh, which are which are uh, uh, causing soil loss. So the first thing which is causing soil loss is the rainfall itself. So the first thing what we have to describe is the so-called rainfall erosivity factor, which is only describing the rainfall. So when there is no rainfall, then we don't have any soil loss. <coughs> We can have, of course, landslides or something like this, but this is not included in the soil loss equation. When we have large, when we have high, high rainfall events or large rainfall events, which a lot with a lot of rainfall in a very short time, then of course we have a, a lot of uh, soil loss, and this is described in this factor. <coughs> the second factor is the soil itself, uh, which is described by the soil erodibility factor K. So the soil erodibility factor is only describing the soil itself, what kind of material is it, what kind of soil is it, what kind of sediment size distribution has it, and so on and so on. The third factor is the slope factor, so it is of course quite important is there no slope when we have no slope then of course there would be no soil erosion because when the rain is dropping on the soil the sediment particles just would go in 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 in, in arbitrary direction and there would be no then there would be no transport of sediment or of, of soil sediment particles or something like this. So the next factor describing uh, soil loss is the length factor. So it depends extremely on the problem whether a field where erosion can take place is very long or very short and this is described by the length factor. And the next thing is of course <coughs> the coverage of the soil the vegetation. When we have something like a, a, a forest um, with a lot of plants, then there is no soil. When we have something like a field without any vegetation, um, then we have a lot of, of, of um, soil erosion. And this cropping management factor describes all the things happening to the vegetation because when it is harvested and the field is without any vegetation then we have a lot of soil, uh, soil erosion and therefore we have to describe the full year's cycle, um, the cropping management on, on a field and then we get something like the cropping management factor. And the last thing <coughs> is the conservation practice factor, which has again nothing to do with all the other factors. So we can have something like, like vegetation, but for example we have something like uh, conservation practices like uh, terrace building or some, some small walls or something like this, 
or plugging in direction of the slope or against direction of the slope. So this is the conservation practice factor uh, and all these things together are describing soil erosion. <coughs> yes. And how does it work? It is uh, extremely simple. The most important things are of course the rainfall and the soil itself. And the rainfall uh, and these two factors are describing from the units the tons per hectare and year which, uh, which are eroded from a soil. These two factors only. So the other factors, the SLCP, don't have the unit. The unit is one and uh, it works in that way that we, that, that we think about a standard soil. This standard soil has a slope, this J is a slope of 9% and a length of 22.1 meters. And this standard slope, we can make experiments with different kind of rainfalls. We can make experiment with different kind of slopes. And for this standard soil, we get something like the soil loss. And this is described by these two factors. <coughs> So the other factors are for this standard soil with a slope of 9% and a length of 22.1 meters are one. So if the slope is 9%, then the, then the slope factor is one. If the length is 22 meters of, of, this, of this field, then the length factor is one. If there is a certain standard uh, vegetation, then the cropping management factor is one. And if there is no protection against soil loss, then the protection factor is one. So this is the way how it works. And if we, do, if we don't know one of these factors, we just, or if we don't know one of these four factors here, we just set it to one and we get a certain idea on soil loss. And this can be improved in the next steps, for example. <clears throat> So what I would like to show is the situation for Bavaria in Germany. Uh, all the slides are from the Landesamt für Landwirtschaft, uh, the agricultural uh, agency in Bavaria. And the first thing what I would like to show is the rainfall erosivity factor. The rainfall erosivity factor, when you know Bavaria, you know that here are the Alps. Here, for example, is Switzerland and Austria. And here are the lower lands. It is more or less or a little bit more flat. And we have a lot of rainfall here in the Alps and in the Bavarian forest here. And therefore, of course, because we have a lot of rainfall, the rainfall erosivity factor is larger in these areas and smaller in those areas where we don't have or where, where we have less rainfall than in the other areas. So the first thing is the rainfall erosivity factor. And normally the unit of the rainfall erosivity factor is thought to be Newton per hour. So a force acting on the bottom on the soil uh, per hour. I think that it's not really correct, but it does not matter because in the next step we cancel out this unit. So it does not matter what kind of unit is here. But this is this uh, rainfall erosivity factor and this is the first factor just describing the rainfall. Uh, and this factor I will explain in the uh, following uh, lecture. Yes, the next factor is the soil erodibility factor K. And K is, is uh, only describing what kind of soil do we have in any area. And the unit of K is tons per hectare and year divided by the unit of the rainfall erosivity factors, Newton per hour. So when we have something like here joule per hour or whatever, then we could must divide here per, by joule per hours. So the, but then we get always the correct unit for the soil erosion or for the full soil erosion. So here we have all the units or up to here we have all the unit we need to describe soil erosion and the soil erodibility factor here for Bavaria. You see the different kind of soils in Bavaria, uh, of course, um, yes, must be, must be determined. And I also think that I will make another lecture on that, how to determine the soil erodibility factor for a certain area. So the next factor is the slope factor. So and the slope factor is quite well known. It's very easy. And this is the reason why I should I would like to show it here in this lecture, the slope factor. Here we have the bottom slope. So the bottom slope in percent. This is bottom slope in English. So and as I said, uh, 
Uh, the slope factor is 1, is set to 1 when we have a button slope, which is quite a large button slope of 9%. So this factor is defined to be 1. So here it is 1, and when we have larger slopes than 9%, then the slope factor increases, and we have, when we have lower slopes, then this 9%, then the slope factor decreases. And this factor can be described by a nice function. So this is the slope factor. You just have to take the slope from some, something like geospatial data. You uh, uh, put it into this formula and then you get the slope factor. So the slope factor is quite easily to, de to be determined when we know the slope itself. So in Bavaria, of course, we also have slope factors. This is the slope factor is quite large where we have uh, some mountains. Here, of course, there's also very large slope factors. This is the Alps, but it is not shown here because there is, or, or this is an extreme situation where we don't have any, yes, where, where we have just have granite and so on, and we don't have any soils here. So in the areas where we have larger slopes, like here in the Bavarian forest, for example, we have larger slope factors and where we have more flat areas, we have smaller slope factors like it is here in, 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 in the area of Munich, for example, what you can see here. So this is a slope factor. For the slope factor, you just need um, geospatial data on the terrain and you can take from a digital terrain model for example, directly the slope factor, introducing it into such a formula. So the next thing is a little bit more difficult, the length of a field or the length factor. This I also took from LFL Bavaria. This picture, it's a very nice picture to explain the influence of the length of a field where erosion, soil erosion can take place. Let us look, let us start from here. Here we have a forest and in a forest we don't assume that there is any much or there's, there's soil erosion, there's no soil erosion because the forest normally is very, very well protected against soil erosion. Then we have to take against, and this are uh, the ISO lines of height. So we have a hill here and, uh, and you see it at the ISO lines and what you have to take as a length of a field is the slope or is in the direction of the slope or perpendicular to the ISO lines of the height here. Uh, we have to take the length from here starting where the erosion can take place to the point where there is sedimentation. Sedimentation normally is in the grounds of the valleys and in the ground of this valley here we have a street. So here is the valley itself and erosion can start from here and it goes up to here. Here would be sedimentation and this length is the length, the erosion length of a field. Here we have a longer field because here it's going directly to the street and the field is a little bit longer and be very careful when we have a ridge or something like this. Here you can see from the ISO lines that we have a ridge. So we have to go up here and here starting from here we go down back uh, to the next valley. So here is something like a ridge and we only we should always start with a field because the ridge uh, uh, from the ridge of something like this. So we should start here, go into the direction perpendic perpendicular to the ISO lines and then we get the length of a field here. Yes, this is a factor of course we, uh, we, we, we should determine from, from, from geospatial data, from GIS or something like this. Uh, this is quite, uh, quite difficult to determine. You can take for example um, land use data combined with, with, with digital terrain data, but it's quite difficult to determine such a factor. So when we have this length, I call this length delta y here, then we can introduce this in such a formula and we get a slope factor. So normally we distinguish between a slope lower than 5% and a slope larger than 5% and the length factor is you get from this formula and here you see uh, the length of a field and here the slope factor L uh, on this, on this axis. You can just use this formula so if, when you have the length you can get the slope factor.
And again, as I said, the slope factor is one when the field has a length of 22 meters. So here is something like 22 meters. And here you see that the slope, that the length factor is one, and then it's increasing because a longer field can give you more steady or no more soil erosion than a shorter field. So this is the length factor. The next, uh, here you can again see the length factor in Bavaria. Uh, here you see larger field lengths and here in, the, in this part you can see smaller field lengths, for example. So the next factor is the cropping management factor, means what kind of vegetation, what kind of crops, what kind of fruits and uh, within the year we have on a field. This is of course quite dif more difficult to, to determine. You need something like agricultural, agricultural knowledge and uh, perhaps I will do the next, one of the next, next, next lectures on that, but here just uh, the cropping management factor for Bavaria. When you don't know something like a crop, crop, cropping management factor for your country, you should set it, of course, again to one. So, and the last thing I would like to show is the conservation practice factor P. So, if we don't do anything against soil erosion, like you see it on this picture, there's a pure soil without or nearly without any vegetation. And here in this area, this is in Northern Africa, I think. Um, I don't know, it's, it's, it must be, I don't know. Um, here you see, for example, um, that wind can happen and uh, induce soil erosion or any kind of rain would induce soil erosion because there is a pure soil without any vegetation. So then when there is no vegetation no or, or no comp co conservation management, then the conservation practice factor is one. Again, is that one. So when there are measurements against soil erosion, like for example, these walls or terraces, or for example, the plowing direction, when the plowing direction is in the direction of the, of the slope, then it is, it is not good for soil erosion. When it's uh, perpendicular to these lines or to these iso lines, uh, then it's good or the, then, then it works against soil erosion. So this kind of processes are described by the conservation practice factor. So I think that's it. Uh, and as a summary, I would like to say that the, that the um, soil erosion uh, due to the universal soil loss equation can be very easily be calculated when you have all the data. You need the data and I just showed you how you can get data for the slope factor from a digital terrain model and introduce it in a formula. And when you have the length of the fields or, or something like the average length of the fields in a certain catchment area, then you can introduce this again in this formula and then you get the length factor. What we need, of course, what is very, very important is, of course, the rainfall erosivity Erosivity, erosivity factor, um, which I would like to explain in a following lecture, and, uh, and the soil erodibility factor K, which I also would like to explain in a lecture which follows in the next weeks or months. Thank you very much.